Hey, this is Nathan from RunDreamAchieve.com. Today's topic, we're going to be discussing running cadence explained. So I want to explain some of the concepts of what running cadence is and some of the things that, uh, some of the challenges that, that come with trying to improve running cadence. Running cadence is basically how many steps you take in one minute. So uh, an idea, you know, a way for you to uh, get an estimate of your running cadence is to count how many steps you take in a 60 second period of time. Uh, running cadence is, is tough to improve. I mean, there's, there's running cadence and then there's also stride length. So uh, in terms of running cadence, and, and the reason why I'm making this video is because I had a question uh, from Mohammed who said, is there any way you can touch on the significance of running with a higher cadence and its connection to lowering one's heart rate? Okay, so a higher cadence uh, again, it's how many steps you're taking. There's athletes that, that take far fewer steps per minute and, and run economically and run very efficient. And then there's athletes that take several, many, many steps per, uh, per minute and still run efficient. So we're all different in terms of that. Um, and you improving your, your stride length and, and, and lowering your heart rate uh, comes with time, comes with focusing on you know, speed development, working on VO2 max training, working on doing longer tempo runs like I talk about, uh, doing those those hill drills where, the, you know, where you're focusing on sprinting up hills and you're focusing on uh, getting in the gym and working on, you know, medicine ball drills and jumping, you know, doing uh, box jumps where you're focusing on um, your, your form and explosive type ac activities where you're recruiting more fast twitch muscle fibers. So in terms of improving your running cadence and improving your your stride length your stride length will improve over time definitely working on your speed but in terms of your running cadence what works for you i i, I wouldn't um in terms of my recommendation don't don't change what has worked for you in the past in terms of running cadence we all have kind of a an overall um set amount of steps we take per per 60 seconds but a lot of us, you know, as athletes, middle to long distance runners, we're not really focusing so much on how many steps we take each each uh, minute. Um, I've never done that in 28 years of you know competing. I I, I think you, you really just need to focus on what you can control most. You know, it's very difficult to change how you run. Uh, you know, because you you want to feel comfortable while you're running. But I think with as as, as you get fitter anaerobically your heart doesn't have obviously does not have to work as hard so and your stride your stride length overall as you get fitter um, and as you're focusing on form when you're doing those those sprint drills on the track doing repeat 200s repeat 600s repeat k's mile repeats two mile repeats over time you know as you get fitter your stride length will become more efficient in terms of your cadence you may take uh, you know a few less steps per per minute uh, but it's just something that um, you, it, it becomes really technical when you're thinking about, well, you know, how many should I improve? Should I take less steps uh, per minute and, and improve upon my running cadence? Not really. I think you, 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 you really want to focus on being as relaxed as you can under pressure. And, and the faster you run, the more relaxation is key in teaching your body to stay as relaxed as you possibly can. Uh, and, and it takes time, it takes practice, uh, especially if you're a long distance runner and, and you really don't have uh, a, a high percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers. We have more slow twitch muscle fibers and a much smaller percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers. So, um, but if you're more of a distance runner, you have to still focus on speed. So the more you can focus on developing your speed, working on doing that one VO2 max workout per week, um, all of my training plans and all my running courses, we focus on that, uh, along with extending the amount of time you're spending at your anaerobic threshold. Again, stress in the body anaerobically is, is critical to run faster and to recruit more fast twitch muscle fibers, because the more of those you can recruit by developing your speed, the more efficient you're going to run, the more, you know, your stride length is going to be improved, your anaerobic fitness and your, your heart obviously is not going to have to work as, as hard. And you're gonna you're gonna be able to run more effectively over th throughout your race because you're focusing on um, you're focusing on that anaerobic training. But it also goes it's very important as well to jog on those days that are you know where you have easy days in place 
and they're really that's really critical because you want to get the most return on your investment from all these hard workouts you're doing um, but in terms of stride length and and running cadence and how that affects your your heart rate at, at race pace your heart like i said the the faster you train and the more that you pay attention to periodization in your training where we again you focus on a specific intensity for a specific amount of time and then you start working on a higher intensity and dropping the volume or dropping the intensity uh dropping the rest period between those hard efforts the more efficient you're going to be you're going to run and the and the more the, your form as well is going to be improved as well so running cadence explained that is the, in terms of answering that question uh, Mohammed is your running cadence is basically how many steps you're going to be taking every minute so that's very difficult to do uh, in terms of if you want to count that yes you can go out and count that uh, my recommendation too is is to see how many steps you're taking per minute early on when you're not very fit at all and then test that again at the you know at the end of a 16 week block of training you know on my on rundreamachieve.com all of my courses and, and training plans are all 16 weeks four months in uh, block of training whether they're you're training for the mile or the marathon I think a four month block of training will is a, definitely plenty of time to prepare well for any distance uh, but it does take time to you know adapt to the hard anaerobic workouts you're doing uh, but test that out see where you're at. Uh, in the first week of your training, count how many steps you're taking uh, and you know just go out and run for one minute and then count how many steps you take and then test it again at the very end. Test it at like 10 days out from your big race. You know, I, I believe in a 10 day taper rather than a three week taper. Um, I think if you continue to, to really remind your legs what you're training them to do up until 10 days out and then you start drastically dropping your volume and your intensity um, and you start giving yourself more rest leading into your big race, uh, you're going to see definitely big improvements. You're, gonna, you're not going to go into a race feeling as tired and lethargic as you, as you may feel uh, doing starting to drop your volume and your intensity three weeks out from a big race. It still works for other athletes, so I'm not saying a three-week taper isn't effective for some athletes because it is, but I do believe that uh, trying, you know, focusing on not dropping your volume and your intensity too far out I think is a is a good um, way to make sure that you go into your race feeling really motivated and and, and rested, and that is really key. Um, but I do believe that um, you know, in terms of running cadence, you know, top marathoners uh, typically typically run uh, have about 90 steps per minute, um, and those are these are for like elite athletes. And then there's other beginners that have a running cadence anywhere from around 78 to around 80 steps per minute. So again, that's just an estimate, but go out and see where you're at when you're not very fit and see how the anaerobic training you've done and all of the aerobic training you've done over a, a 16 week block of training, see how that affects your running cadence at the end and see if, I guarantee you'll probably, you know, have. Your, your running cadence will may not be that much uh, different. You may see a slight difference, but your stride length, I would, I would see as definitely having been improved from that hard anaerobic workouts. Because um, again, when you're training on the track and you're training at your VO2 max, uh, you're, you're stressing this anaerobic systems of the body so much, you're building up so much lactic acid that you just simply can't clear it. But again, it's going to not only training at those types of intensities is going to make your goal race pace feel easier. And that happens over several weeks of training, several months of training. Um, but I think too, that will make you run very, you know, much more efficient, much more effective. And I think will definitely improve your stride length. If you're always focusing, you know, you are focusing on your, your form and training, you're focusing on your, your arm, arm movements, you're lifting your knees, you know, again, when you, when you're stressing, uh, when you're doing the speed workouts, you have to focus on your form, focus on your stride length, and focus on your form when you're doing those types of workouts. And again, being as relaxed as you possibly can. Even when you're out doing tempo runs, consciously tell yourself to relax because you'll notice that a lot of the muscle, uh, your, your shoulders tighten up, your face muscles tighten up. And if you watch the best middle to long distance runners, they look totally relaxed. They're in control. 
Um, you know, look at those sprinters out there. Look at Usain Bolt when he was competing. Look at Michael Johnson when he was competing. Um, the, the current athletes today, Karsten Wolham uh, from, from Norway, he just broke the uh, 400 meter hurdles world record running a 46.70. Uh, go on YouTube and check out that video. Look how relaxed he is. These athletes to look totally relaxed and their stride length focus on, you know, they're totally relaxed, but their stride length, they've definitely practiced that over time. So I hope this video on running cadence explained, it kind of gives you a better idea of what running cadence is um, and some of the things that you need to be thinking about in order to um, have an effective running cadence and a stride length, but also lower that heart rate um, you know, and lower the stress on your heart when you're trying to race at high levels. Uh, again, you're, you're, as you become more anaerobically fit, your heart doesn't have to work as hard. So you'll, you know, we all notice this early on in our training when you're doing say like a three or four mile tempo run in the first week or two of your training block, it's gonna be very difficult for you to, to, to handle that type of effort. Your pace is gonna be much slower than it's going to be at the end of your training because again, your body is adapted to that intensity um, and to higher intensities, and you can run that same effort, but for 10 to 15 miles at the same effort, and your pace per mile or pace per kilometer is gonna be several seconds faster at the same heart rate. So, you know, it is very important to continue to develop uh, and focus on your form with over time, your running cadence will develop. More importantly, your stride length will, will you know, extend out and you'll become much more effective as a middle to long distance runner if you focus on the fundamentals, which is speed development, endurance, focusing on recovery, which is even more important, probably most important uh, tactic that you can learn is to back off on those easy days because you give yourself 48 hours of recovery between a, a hard you know, workout. Sometimes you're gonna do a double. Like over the years, I did an AM hard session. Maybe I did a like a tempo run in the morning and then in the afternoon I would do a track session. Um, a lot of the top middle to long distance runners sometimes do two anaerobic workouts in a day. So if you're doing those types of workouts, you want to make sure that you give yourself sufficient time to recover um, and, and run and, and you know jog easy on those easy days. It doesn't matter the pace on an easy day, you know, because on those hard days when you, when you have to do a track session or you have hill repetitions to do or, you're, or you have a, a long tempo run planned or a hard long run plan, you're gonna need that recovery day, you know, those recovery days to make sure that when it's time for you to really punch the gas and really push hard anaerobically that you can do that because you've allowed yourself time to recover. So please give me a like if you, if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow and more, and more viewers to see my videos. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that that red subscribe button and the bell icon so when I make new videos, you'll be notified. And if there's anything else I can do to help you all out uh, with your running, feel free to leave me a comment below any of my videos. There are resources as well under all my videos that will help you get to the next level in your running. So with that, I wish you all the best. Hope this video on running cadence was helpful in some way. Uh, again, if I didn't cover a specific uh, area of, of running cadence, uh, feel free to leave me below a comment below. So I wish you all the best and I'll talk to you all in the next video.